Hi everyone, welcome back to online classroom Jeku Tio. We are entering into the last topic of chapter 2, 2.4 Role of human in maintaining a balanced nature As we all know that our nature is threatened by destruction because of human activities and that is really sad So we should be responsible for conserving and maintaining the balance of our nature First of all, let's look at a few activities and what are some of the, of the effects that these activities have on our environment. First one, as you can see from the picture here, is forest logging, meaning we cut down trees. What are some of the effects that forest logging bring? Number one, of course, is the extinction of flora and fauna species because we actually destroy their habitat. Next is soil erosion because if we keep cutting down trees, the number of trees decrease and there's no roots of the plants to hold the soil together. And so the soil becomes loose and soil erosion will happen. And also greenhouse effect. We all know that carbon dioxide is greenhouse gas and trees, green plants can help us by carrying out photosynthesis where they use up all this carbon dioxide so plants are very important and so forest logging is a serious matter next industrialization when more and more factories are being built and what are some of the effects number one of course is pollution they cause a very serious pollution for, uh, of the air, water, and soil, acid rain, and again, greenhouse effect because they also contribute to greenhouse gases. Third activity is agriculture. Okay, Agriculture is actually good because we plant something, but how does it damage our environment? Well, sometimes in agriculture, there might be an overuse of pesticides and fertilizers and if we use too much pesticides and fertilizers it's not good because they are chemicals and they bring pollution of water next if we practice non-sustainable agriculture the soil can lose minerals and number four waste disposal this is really bad if we do not throw our rubbish or garbage properly if we don't dispose them the right way it can cause pollution everywhere and because of that flash floods can happen and also the foul odor meaning it's really stinky how do you like the smell of rubbish all over the place i don't like it well, now that we know the effects and the damage that some of our activities caused to our environment, then how do we solve the problem? Well, number one, we can enforce laws. Actually, the forestry department is always carrying out uh, law enforcement activities okay? in this nation, in all the states. They normally carry out patrols in the forest areas using helicopters and also rock blocks to check on the lorries to make sure that um, they are carrying out their activities following the, uh, following the guidelines. Okay. Number two, we can increase public awareness. How do we do that? Number one, we can do it through schools like all of you. At school, you study subjects like moral education and also Pandidikan Islam where you learn the values of appreciating our nature. Secondly, the mass media can play their roles. The newspaper, the radio, the television can also spread awareness to the public. Number three, we can practice 5R. What does this 5R? We have refuse, reduce, reuse, recycle, and repurpose. Let's look at them one by one. Refuse meaning we refuse. We do not want to use anything that cannot be recycled. For example, if there is a choice of polystyrene food container 
and a cardboard food container, we will choose the cardboard. We do not want to use the polystyrene because it cannot be recycled. Secondly, reduce. We can reduce the number of materials used. For example, we can bring our big grocery bag. Okay, instead of using 10 different plastic bags, we can use one or two big grocery bag. Third, reuse. We can use the materials again. Again, we can use the materials again. For example, now, Jekutio is seeing more and more people bringing their own reusable straw. So, they bring their own straw to the restaurant and after they use it, they wash it, they clean it so that it can be used again. Number four, recycle like this little girl do here. We can organize our trash so that we can arrange them in such a way that the bottles can go to one place, the paper can go to the another box and the food waste and so on so that we can recycle these materials. And number five, repurpose. This is the fun part. Nowadays, if you go on Google, if you go on Facebook, if you go on Pinterest, there are a lot of ideas on how you can practice repurpose. Some of Jekutio's friends even make their used shoes, the shoes that they do not want anymore. They start planting flowers in those shoes. Isn't that great? And finally, step number four, use biological control. Remember, Jekutio warned you, this is a very, very important topic. Do you still remember what is biological control? I hope you do. It is a method that the farmers use to control the pest population by using their natural enemy. For example, in palm oil plantation, they will use owl to control the population of rats. So, if we practice biological control, we can avoid the use of pesticides and then we can reduce pollution. Well, that's all from Jekutio in this video. I will see you in the next video where we will start chapter 3, okay? Bye! If you have learned something new from this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.